Okay, thank you very much for joining this interview. My name is Omar Jaju and this is The Chronicle. Today, we have the President of the Gambia National Olympic Committee, Mr. Alhaji Dudu Kapijouf, and also the President of the Gambia Athletics Association. We're here to talk about uh, the development going on. I mean, there's a new house uh, for Gambian athletes. What is it all about and how did they build that house? We will talk about all those things in this exclusive interview with The Chronicle. Uh, Mr. Juf, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. Uh, briefly, tell us about yourself. Uh, Dr. Juf is, I am, is a household name in the country. Um, I am Alaji Dudu, alias Kapi Juf. I was a former athlete former international footballer, former basketball, international basketball player. And uh, I can simply say I was one of the first Gambian to, to be awarded scholarship to go to England as an athlete in 1970. Thank God <laughs> I rose through the ranks as an athlete and captain the Gambian national team in athletics for almost 20 years. I played football internationally representing the Gambia. My last competition was in Mauritania with, the, uh, with footballers like Biri Biri, Ablangom, Ashish Koka, Moses Trin, Young guy to name a few. And uh, it was after that I retired as a footballer. But I concentrated in athletics because I had the opportunity and I was exposed. Then I was the top sprinter in the country and I set two Gambian records for 20 years. And these records were broken by my own athletes that I have trained. After completing my athletics career, I went to London, trained as a coach. I went to Germany also, trained as a coach. And I was awarded high performance coaching certificate in track and field, higher coaching certificate. I also went to Rome, Italy, and I also back with a diploma in sports management and administration. I continued as a coach, and I coached some top athletes like Omar Fai, the present Minister of Defense, sure, Omar. Banana Jaju and others, I mean now, these were top athletes in this country, they were, and I produced one of the third best relay team, female relay team in Africa. <laughs> and they won bronze medal, Amindau, Jabu Jao, Georgiana Freeman, Frances Jata, uh, Victoria Decker. And I am proud to say I rose through the rank as an athlete, as a coach, as sector general, and I took over as president of the Gambia Athletics Association in the end of 2011, when my president left the country for the United States. My first priority was one, sports must develop. We cannot take responsibility of positions without doing anything for the athletes. Yeah. So we will come to that. Yeah. Oh, what has been your major achievements in sport in your entire career? Well. I was the best sprinter in the country, I told you. I set two Gambian national records. By then, athletics was not as it is today, because it was only the African Games, the first African Games in 65, when I captained the Gambia, and I reached the semi-finals in Congo Brazzaville. I went to the Commonwealth Games in 1970, and I reached the semi-finals in the 200 meters. Then until my retirement, because it was after 73, when I was a coach, I took the Gambia 
I took the Gambia to the Afri second Africa Games in Lagos. And on my return, I was transferred to the provinces. And that was the end of my active athletics and football career. When I returned, I continued my coaching career where I coached so many top athletes in this country. I named a few of them, like Banana Jaju, so and these four ladies, and Omar Fai and others. Okay. So moving forward, there is a building of house. Maybe it's completed or it's near completion. The GAA, at what stage are you now? The GAA. House. The building is completed. We are just hustling for the refurbishment for the mati material and equipment like tables, chairs, computers. And I was able to get some from my son in law in, the, in England, mm. and my daughter. Uh, although it is not a gift, but I promise to repay them. And we are trying to get more in order to complete the office. Okay. How long did the uh, construction of the building start? It started in 2016, after the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is, sorry, it was too tough for us because when I acquired the land, I was asked to pay almost 50 almost about $80,000. I have paid 50000 for the farm, 20000 for service fee, 1500 for stamp, etc. Almost I have paid about fifty. dollars Where did you acquire the land from? From government. From government. And that was during the time of the former president, but I was told that that is a directive from the president that we have to pay that, yeah. which I did pay. Fortunately, when I went to the Olympic Games 2016, I approached a friend who is the Prince of Saudi, King Wahab of Saudi Arabia. He was then the president of the Olympic Committee. And we have that good relationship. I told him that I have a project and I want him to support me. Fortunately, I was there with Marcel Mendy, the director of sports. Abdulaika, the Deputy Permanent Secretary Sports. Once we were drinking attire in the athletic village, I was called by the Secretary of the Prince and said, I am wanted by the Prince. I went to see him and he gave me an envelope. Then I was with Momo Dudemba, the uh, Development Officer, GNOC. <laughs> and when I returned to the hotel, I took out the money and I told Marcel, I am giving money, but I am going to use it for my project. That's how much? $3,000. And when I returned, I consulted uh, a neighbor who is working at Jamwok, Mr. Fufana. His son is a contractor. And I told him that I want to thank the area because I was warned that if that is not fenced within six or one year, they will, it will be seized. Then I told him about this is the only money that I have. I was charged almost about 200,000 or so, which was not enough. Then I said, this is what I have, I can pay you. They say it's all right, you can pay us because we are one. Then I paid them and they fenced the whole area, put two double doors. And, we know, and I preserved the land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then when Lord Sebastian Co, the president, World Athletics president, took over from Lamin Jack, yeah. then we have that rapport also. And I told you, you people must come up, come in, because we are struggling. We have one single room at the stadium as our office. And it is too tight. And we are paying 3500 for the room per month. Then he promised that let me put up an application and they will help me. Which room were you paying 3500 Our, our present office at the stadium. We are still paying it. To who? Government? Independent, yes. Independent stadium management. I thought that was a free office for all the no, associations. No, no. For us, we are paying. But why I are you paying? For the others, I think they are also paying. Why are you paying? 
We are charged. They said they have, we have to pay for the, the use of because we are using the water. Okay. Even we fix the electricity. Okay. So now, what is the total cost of the construction? It's about 3.5 million. Because we paid 2.1 to the contractor, Mr. Serti Yan Kamara. And uh, why do you think Sebastian Co and other, the Prince of Saudi, funded this construction? Well, because of my relationship with them, and the IWF is there to support, you know, national federations. And because he took over, he decided to encourage countries by giving them incentive, by providing support, that you have to do what is one required. Every stage, I have to report to them, from the ground up to the finishing for them to be satisfied that the money is probably used. And according to him, he said, I think if all the African countries were like you, then I will be proud. I say, well, the money is for the building, and it must be used for, to, to construct the building. So how was the, the funding remitted? When I say remitted, it, it was half. How was it paid? It was paid 5,000, 10,000, every quarter, every year, sorry. Was it through your Account to the GA. or the association's account? To the GA account. To the GA account. I don't touch money. Okay. How has and your executive reacted to this building, the construction well, of this? This is just the I can say it is not Capi alone because you use the name of Capi. But this is all of us as an executive. Because we meet, we discuss the stage of the building, how the money is being used, every executive meeting we discuss it. And at the end of every year we prepare a report to the IWF. Because they demand, you have to tell me how this money is used, the receipts and everything. We have an international an auditor who audits the account. And if they are satisfied, they will send you another $10,000 just for three, three years. You talked about hiring a contractor. How transparent was it to award this project to the contractor? <laughs> well, because it was cheaper for us. Because we feel it was all the people we are asking about four thousand, four million, three million, which was not enough for us. Why do you think the Gambian needs an athletic powers? Because athletics today is well recognized in the world. We are doing well, and the athletes need to have somewhere that they can post over. This is our office. We are paying lots of money when we have competitions. We use the hotels to come our athletes. And we pay monthly, you know, the hotels. There is no compromise. We hire transport. The athletes are suffering going up and down from their residence to the stadium. And all the other federations in the world. Federation is federation, it's not a club. And we want people, when they come here, they'll know that there is really a federation. So who was monitoring and evaluating this project? Well, it is the treasurer and the executive. Because we report every meeting once a month. We submit reports. And we also forward the receipts and everything to the auditor. We have a foreign auditor. We used to have our executive member as an auditor. But the IWF had to say, no, we have to hire an auditor. So we hire an auditor, and the auditor looks into the matter, and every year he will prepare a report, which is forwarded to the IWF and the executive. Do you have plans of hiring full-time competent staff? For example, you need a CEO there. We are trying to, because we have enough space in the office, and we want it to be full-time. The secretary has no time, but he will soon retire. But when we are ready, we will want to have a CEO. Because when? we have enough space. When will this project be ready? Well, I said it's the, it's the materials that we are trying to get. Do you have a targeted year? Well, month? first okay. before end of the year. How important do you think this house is to Gambian athletics? It's, well, I can say it's a tie to Gambia to have that office. I can see it is, we are the only con 
Mm. In Africa, if other than Niger, other than Kenya, but the other countries are all using the stadium. But for us, we feel it is not ideal. The name of the Gambia is high up now in international competition. We are well recognized by the IWF. That is why they are supporting us. And our athletes are the best athletes in the sub-region. Forget about Nigeria and Ghana, we beat them. You, you always talk about athletes, you know, how supportive. No. Yeah, and I mean. also and also other disciplines. For example, beach volleyball. They have never traveled. My committee is the first committee to organize zone two beach volleyball for them. And they won. We sponsored them to go to Qatar. Mm. And they won. We also sponsored them to go to uh, Morocco for the African game, and they won. Right. That is why today, exactly, I can simply say that we have one team sport that we can boast of, which has never happened. Recently, we paid for boxing to go to Dakar qualification round. But whose responsibility? I think it's the NOC. For the this. NOC, exactly. I mean. Exactly. Because so, we are talking of two areas. Exactly. So I am both, yeah. Talking about the NOC, yeah. how many executive members, board members do you have at the NOC? The NOC, we are about 10. 10. Okay. How effective are they? They are in effective. We have monthly meetings. We have management meeting every month. And then we have board meeting every month. When last did you have your board meetings or management meetings? We are board meeting on how to call it again, on video. And so, we are going to have one next week for board, board meeting okay. because of this virus. Yeah. Otherwise, every month we have meetings. Yeah. And we are communicating with them through our meals. How long have you been the president of GAA? Just 2012. I have never been president. I was, people are saying that Kabi has been there for long. I have never been there for long. I took over when Fred Lloyd Evans left for the United States in 2012. Uh, do you have any success on plan? Oh yes, because for my the plan next is, leader. Yeah, we have so many in the executive that can be leaders. Mm. Even outside the executive, people that I have trained, they have attended university in Germany, sports administrators. Ableika was my children. I sent him to Germany. What does it take to be a president of the Gambia Athletics Association? Well, you must be dedicated. You must be honest. You must have the contacts. That is why so many federations here fail. Because if you rely on the ministry, they don't have the funds. They cannot serve. And without funds, forget about sports. It's expensive. If you don't have funds, how can you take your athletes or your players footballers to compete internationally? Mm. How can you take them? Where are the funds to help them to train? Where will you get the funds to equip them? It's a real sacrifice. Years ago, huh, we had you say you wanted to leave. <laughs> but Why? the athletes say, I cannot leave. Well, why, do you want it? why do you touch so? Why do you? No, want because it's the athletes. They are putting and say you cannot leave. Who is going to take over from you? What you are doing for us? Yeah, what I'm saying. Before the athletes say no, you cannot go. Yeah. You thought of leaving. But no, why? I don't say. I say when my project, okay. I have a vision. Okay. When my vision is ready, you want to leave. I'm going to leave. Being people, I will not leave. I will retire, but not tired. But why do I you think continue? the athletes say no? Don't leave. Because of my contribution to them. Uh, my sacrifice to see that they accept. I take my own resources to support them. But why will you take your resources to support? Because I want a Gambia. I'm a Gambia. Mm. And I want to see development of and that is today we are proud of the athletes. If I didn't do who is going to do it? How many athletes did you support individually? Like how many projects did you do individually? If I tell you I have more than 12 athletes in the United States that I sent. If I show you my video, Lamin Drame, 
He's a professional. Athlete? Athlete. You sent him? To the American nine of to do, I mean, dramas. To do what there? Because I took him to University of Kansas. But why uh, do you do that? Huh? Why do you do that? Why shouldn't I do it? As, as then I was not even the president. Okay. They need to be developed. They need to have their potential. They need to help themselves and help their parents. I initiated the service at that is club. When I approached the late Sonko, the Sonko, sorry, the former uh, IG, when he was IG, no, the one that was Minister of Interior. Osman. And I challenged him. That was in 2005. And I say, Usman, the services today, the head of the services are all young Gambians. In our, during our time, we have Europeans in the services. And the best athletes come from the services. And I told him, well, and today, you cannot boast of any athletes other than Adam and Jai. Adam and Jai? Adam and Jai. He was the Africa's champion in the air tournament and was my athlete. He was at the this. Then I say, I am urging you and long ask long term on camera. And I say, I want you people to start and bring up inter service sports. All of you to have uh, 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 sport managers in your institution. Mm -hmm. That was the time all these boys were employed by the police, some by the army, some prison and immigration. Why? I don't want them to suffer like the other athletes. To retire, you don't have education. You don't, you don't have, I have to call it again, professor. Then you become destitute. But if you are appointed by the police, tomorrow you will, your rank will come up. So many criticize you for empower management modern style of, of leadership, which means uh, an extreme form of dominant uh, leadership or autocratic leadership that whatever you say should happen. That is false. Happen. That is false because I have an executive committee and the executive meets every month and any decision is made by the executive, not the people. That is why even at the training ground, I don't go there frequently. Mm -hmm. Because I left that with the coaches to select the athletes that should be selected. And I have a committee that goes there to monitor them, sit with them, and finalize the selection of athletes. We have meetings just three weeks back. The GA? The GA. When last did you have an AGM? And we should have. The financial report? Yeah, we should have GA. one last year. Then it was postponed to this year. Why they postponed? Because the audit report was not ready. But why? We decided to have no. It's the auditor. We cannot force them. These are private auditors. Then we should have one in June, but because of this incident, then we decided to say we are pushing it up to September. When we will have our age. The documents are already. I can show you. All the reports are ready with the auditor's report. So who is the treasurer of the of the GAA? He's one, uh, they call it Yusuf Ajuf, he's from the Nyomis. He was an economist mm. at the uh, retired economist at uh, the then, uh, what is the name of the institution again? So is he aware of all the funds coming to GAA? He goes to him, he's the treasurer. He goes to him. He goes to the, the he has the checks and everything. Even now, we have to pay the white man mm -hmm. for his salary. And I told him that you prepared for the white man because the white man is querying that today is on the first. Do you have an internal control system uh, in the GAA to, to, to ensure that uh, there is absolute financial transparency transactions? That is why I'm telling you that this thing goes to the executive. Even the, the budget, the calendar, is discussed and approved by the executive. Mm. Then it will go to the AGA. How is the executive 
that monitor everything. And then the auditors, then the IWA. If there is anything wrong, the IWA will write to you and say, what about this? Explain. How effective is your executive body? We hardly, we hardly see them come forward. Anytime you talk about athletics, you hear the voice and the face of Kapi. I know because people applaud me as the president, but they are always at the stadium. Even Sakoti School Sport, they are the one officiating. They are always there. That is why sometimes if you, I wanted to refuse your interview. Because I told them I don't want every time people come to Kapi, Kapi, Kapi. And it is not Kapi, it is the executive. I'm just if you go ahead. Although I go out and search for funds. Because I have contacts, I, people know me. Sure. That is why I'm doing it. I don't want to sit as president, you know, I'm president. I sit. We have to thank you so much for always talking to us. Yeah. I have to say, yeah. you are always welcome to the media. Yeah. And I have to commend you sincerely for always accepting, yeah. opening your doors to us. Thank you so much for that. So 2020 is supposed to be the year for the Olympic Games, you know, but due to the COVID-19, it, it was postponed. What did you make out of the postponement? Well, it's not good for the athletes because they have to start fresh. Because there are certain athletes that are in the high performance center. They were in top years. They were among the best in Africa. What, what, God knows what will happen next year. Although according to the IWF, the letter that we received, Gina Bass is qualified, His qualification, her qualification stands. And the others must try to compete to qualify. Mm. That is why I have decided to bring them down. Because they cannot train in Dakar. And I have to arrange with the stadium manager to give them at least three times a week. Are you coaching them? Do you coach them? I don't normally go there because this is what I am avoiding. If Kapi is going to the track all the time and at least are selected, they say it's Kapi could select them as the president. And there are coaches that are put there to look into the affairs of the artists. I'm not happy. But you, you mentioned earlier on that you want them to come down. <laughs> they are want... here. They are down. They are already here. Okay. How prepared was your office, I mean the NOC, uh, before the postponement of the Olympic Games? How prepared were you? No, we were very prepared. Even the chef, the mission was there. That is... Uh, Tony Tabal. Prepared in what sense? Like Preparing for the team, for the Gambian team, and having meetings. Because they were all, every month they have a meeting by the organizing committee in uh, Japan. Mm. And he's always there on there and report to us. Mm. Uh, IOC and ANOCA have disposed funds to, to NOCs to support athletes that were uh, on their qualification, for example, volleyball, swimming and even judo so far. How much of money did the journalist received? Well, I cannot tell you now. <coughs> that is unless the treasurer can tell you. But I know it is through this funds that we take to support the athletes, even to pay for them to go to the African Games. But you can confirm that the money... They used to send money for the only preparation of the Olympic Games. So you received it? For the, the athletes. The journalist received it's in the dips. The they don't give the full amount. The GNOC received the money. Yeah, I think we have the system. That is why we are able to send the volleyball, beach volleyball team. We are able to support Fine Guy, you know. We are sponsoring him. We are paying all his competitions and air tickets, which is good. We sponsored boxing. We sponsored volleyball. We sponsored the other time handball. These are all part of Olympic preparation. Okay. Because without that, they cannot qualify for the Olympics. And they have to undergo that qualification with swimming. Uh, but why is the GNOC still silent about the financial inflows uh, from both the uh, Anoka and Olympic Solidarity? No, we don't silence. We report it to the executive. To, to, exec to, uh, to the to the, to the Congress. We prepared the report, the report is circulated. Oh, it has gone to the assembly already? It was. It is circulated. There is nothing hidden in that. Okay. And in September, we are going to have an AGM. Come there, you will see the report. So how do you intend to fairly distribute these funds to the right beneficiaries? No, what we do is, at the end of every year, 
only federation uh, actually submit their how to call it, their budget, yeah. their calendar of activity, and we prioritize it like it's Olympic Games. We support all the federation that are going for the Olympics because the fund is for that. Hmm. We support. We even, if I tell you, we are even supporting some federation that should not be supported. Like who? <laughs> like a federation that are not Olympic sports. Mention two or one. No, I'm just telling you, like chess, like the other two, like uh, non-Olympic sports, cricket. All these they are not Olympic. And according to the act, the money of the NOC should not. IOC should not be given to non-Olympic sports. But why are you giving them the money? We have to support the Afghanian. No, and the nobody IOC, helped them. The IOC said no, don't support No, them. no, but what we are saying, the ministry is not supporting them. And they are part of the, uh, of, uh, of the NOC. We don't want them to leave them and they just... Do you know what we used to do? We pay for their annual subvention. All of them. Chess is an Olympic International. Sport. Maybe cricket, but chess is a No, I'm just game. giving you an example. Yeah. I'm just giving you a few examples. We used to pay for their international federation subscription. Because they don't have the funds. Tell me, how many federations? We have about 26, 27 federations. Who have office here? Tell me. Most of them are briefcase association. What they are association? And if they apply for assistance, we will reject them like cycling. Now, for ex that's a typical example. Yeah. Why should you even accept the affiliation of non-existent associations? If they are accepted by their international federation. For example, in the case Gambia. of Triathlon. Yeah. Triathlon doesn't exist in the Gambia. Yeah. And they are affiliated to your, to your body, the NOC. How Sa does that happen? Triathlon is approved by Sports Council. We are not registering federation unless we register you, unless you are accepted by the National Sports Council. But well, why do you think the sports country? And by your international federation. Do you think Triathlon is existent in the country? Well, it's not. Yeah. It's not. And that doesn't. Go and that down. is the first step. We don't register any federation that is not registered by the, by the National Sports Council. For the sake of your legacy. And also, th this is what I found there. I, they have already been registered. Yeah, but you can, you can, you can. I, I cannot kick that out because they are also recognized by the International Federation. Well, how? I, it's a question that they should answer. We cannot say, International Federation, you should not register this when they have already been registered. Then there must be a forge of documentation somewhere else. No, no, no. I think that question, you should ask it to Sport Council. Because they are the arm of government responsible for national federation and the registration starts from there uh -huh. fair enough uh, we are aware that 2020 is an election year for for you yes at the GNOC uh, do you think your team's performance is impressive enough well it's to... every the people I cannot say that I know when we took over we decided to say one well, we have three areas four areas which we have to develop one, human resource. This, which I'm not saying that we have done well. We have sent some difficult degree courses. For example, you see, human resource. Mm -hmm. We have sent Usman Radha Golf, Master Sports Management. We have sent Yoranjai Swimming, Master Sports uh, Management. Khadija Tunjai, Samura, swimming, master's degree in sport management, Abdullah Jalo, basketball, master's degree in sport management, Muhammad Jane, GNOC, BSC, and we have also seen GF, GFF camera is now in Korea. GFF? Gambia Football Federation camera is now in Korea. Which camera? He is the draft. Something Babukar camera? Babukar, I think. Yeah. Hey, Babukar. Babukar. He's now in Korea. You sent him? Yes. All these stuff were from the and we have also organized uh, sports management and administration courses for all the regions. Two per each region. 
in order to develop our human resource base. Uh. Two, we have constructed, as I told you, this, uh, during this short period, we have constructed the Seracunda East Mini Stadium. We are refurbishing the national, the GMSC headquarters. We have refurbished the athletics track. Both the GA and the NOC. Do you have any intention to stand again for elections? Yes, I'm going to stand again. How sure are you of winning? Uh, it's not with the people. As I told you, my contribution to sport, what I have done, is what I am selling to the people. That is what I am selling. Are you saying the same executive that is in your camp? Or you my camp. I don't have a camp. No, I mean, when I say camp, it's your executive. Yes. Now you have Abdullah Jalo as your secretary, Beatrice Allen. I mean, your, your, your composition of executive, are you maintaining them for the next... No, no, it's on me. You know, the executive of the GNA is selected by the National Federation. Now, what I mean is... I don't know. When you're vying, no. you have a plan... No, of if we can access. get others to come, well and good. Are you okay with the executive that is there now? I am, to continue I am, with you? I am okay with them. If we have additional, we will take them. Because it's not our decision. Mm -hmm. It is the decision of the Gambian people. That is the National Federation. How sure are you that your camp or executive will survive the next election? Well, it depends. If they want to let them, let us leave. We leave and give them. When is your next election? It's in December. Uh -huh. December? Yes. If we have people to come, let them come. Because it's Gambia. Every Gambian has the right to stand. Mr. Juf, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. It has always been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. M maybe you want to have anything yeah, to What I always say is that I am selected by the people to represent them, to serve them. And I think I'm not saying that I serve them. What I have done, what I can. I have made, we have made a plan of how to develop sports we force and try to help them to develop their administrative capacity two we have decided to build some infrastructures which we have done and we are trying to get funds to develop other infrastructure infrastructure outside the greater Banjul area two we have decided to see that we give scholarship and correct at least footballers to excel we bring the coach for women football we signed the contract for gfm monica star monica star she has gone back yeah we know we said she has to go back we are trying to get another person to come a technician to come for the national team both junior and senior we have developed at least and thank God today, I am proud to say that we have Africa's champion. Thank you very much, Mr. Duke. I wish I <laughs> shake your hand, but... Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, it's it's Corona time, so yeah. I cannot... I cannot shake your hand. How many people there talk? It's, this is Gambia. You don't prevent people from talking. Yeah, thank you so yeah, much. You know. It's okay. Thank you so much for, for granting us this interview. Yeah. It has been an interview with the uh, the president of the Gambia National Olympic Committee, Mr. Haji Dudu Kapiju. He also doubles as the president of the Gambia Athletics Association. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for watching.